when I first get a new MacBook, there are a number of things that I do to get it set up correctly to ensure it suits my workflow. Those changes range from adjusting settings, downloading all the applications I need, to the more aesthetic kind of changes like having a new wallpaper and making the dock more minimal than it comes out of the box. In this video, I'm going to take you through all of the changes I make, both big and small, to hopefully help you set up your laptop so it performs the best and you get the most out of it with a little surprise added in towards the end. Let's get right into it. I recently bought this M3 MacBook Air and I've been patiently waiting until I got around to make this video to get it optimized and ready for anything I want to throw at it. I should also mention that if you have this laptop or any of Apple's laptops for that matter, the same advice and sentence will apply so don't worry if we don't have the exact same laptop. First, you may notice that this is a bone stock laptop and I kind of like to start with a fresh slate. You may also notice that there are a number of applications both on the dock and also when you go into the launch pad. With Windows machines a lot of them come with what's called bloatware which is essentially unnecessary applications pre-installed onto the machine. The apps and launch pad you see here 90% of them I will never use so I personally classify them as bloatware and my first port of call is to start removing any application that I know won't be used. Now you can delete these applications by going into your applications folder and dragging them to the recycle bin however there are third-party applications that will uninstall whatever application you want and remove any remnants of files left on your laptop I started using an application called app cleaner I found out about this from a friend of mine and his YouTube channel corrupt once you use this application you will know that all files are actually being removed from your device and you'll free up more storage at the same time which is a win-win once this is done you can also remove any unwanted applications from the dock that you don't use on the regular simply right-click using two fingers and press options then remove from dock once you have that done the dock may start to look a little empty so you can now drag your favorite applications back into the dock simply open launchpad by doing an all finger pinch motion on the trackpad or by selecting the launchpad key usually f3 or f4 depending on your device and dragging that application to the dock like so next and probably most important is downloading and installing the apps you need to use on a day-to-day -day basis for me some of the basics are notion which is an all-in-one note-taking app where i essentially manage my youtube channel and a lot of other parts of my life i also download discord where i keep in touch with my friends that also have youtube channels we have our own server where we bounce ideas off each other and critique each other's content then of Obviously, Spotify, an essential for me when listening to music while I'm doing other work. And this kind of poses the age old question should I switch to Apple Music? I recently got a six month trial at my AirPods Pro and I can't help but consider it. Let me know what you use down in the comments and if I should make the switch. But I've noticed that Spotify recently released audiobooks onto their premium, so it's kind of hard. I'll also install the likes of Premiere Pro and Lightroom, essentially what I have on my Mac Mini setup already, so I can do a bit of editing on the go. I also install a free application called Rectangle, which allows you to bypass the awful Windows snapping in Mac OS and makes it 10 times more useful. I'd recommend this to anyone one that uses Mac OS as it's a real lifesaver if you're working with multiple tabs. Apple really need to up their game in my opinion as they're way behind Windows which I believe had it in like Windows 7, correct me if I'm wrong. Next up is setting up the browser. I actually do enjoy using Safari which is the default one on Mac OS so there's not a whole pile of change required in this area but I do always download Chrome anyway as some of the extensions I want to use won't work on Safari as they're only developed for Chrome. Apart from that I don't use any crazy browsers and I'll sometimes get get bookmarks set up but that's the extent of the browser tinkering that I do. If you have a fingerprint scanner on your MacBook and haven't set it up already this is your chance to do so. It's a massive time saver and it allows you to sign into sites and applications using your iCloud keychain so you don't have to worry about remembering passwords or anything like that. I hadn't got a laptop with a fingerprint scanner previously and I can only say how much of a game changer it has been having this. To get set up with this if you haven't already simply press command and space and type in touch ID. Here it may prompt you to set up a fingerprint or if you already have got a fingerprint set up it will give you the option to add another one. Once you complete that process you are good to go and you can start using your fingerprint for everything or if you'd only like to use it for certain things you can untick those options down below to suit your needs. One of the handy things you can also do to your new laptop is change how the keyboard and trackpad respond to input. You can do this to increase the speed of your typing by making the switches more sensitive and reduce the repeat delay and you can also alter how the trackpad works depending on the gestures you do to it, how sensitive it is and so on. To change any of the trackpad settings, press command and spacebar 
and type in trackpad. In here, you have a number of options to change the gestures, the speed of tracking, how you actuate the secondary click and much, much more. To alter the keyboard, simply press command and space again and type in keyboard. Here you can change the key repeat rate, the delay until key repeat, along with how bright you want the keyboard backlight to be. If you want it to auto adjust depending on the lighting or if you even want it on at all. Finally, I like to personalize my MacBook as nice as some of the default wallpapers are, there's something about having a nice wallpaper or photo that you've taken yourself that really adds an extra layer of personalization and customizability to the experience. It's also your laptop. You've paid your hard earned money for it. It should be yours in every way possible. It's rare that I stick with just one wallpaper for life though. And I find that I'm constantly changing them out for other ones that I've taken or made. If you'd like to get a wallpaper like this one, I've left a link in the description to my store where I have the wallpapers that you can download for free. Feel free to use these for both your MacBook or iPhone, I've left both versions for easiness. If you're interested in other wallpaper packs, they're also available on my site. With that said, if you enjoyed this video and would like to find out if you should buy the M3 MacBook Air, check out this video here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.